Mr. Voodoo himself, Mark Daly. How's it going? Great to see you again. Yeah. We, we were sort of discussing, weren't we, before the interview, how long it's been. We reckon about two years? Two, two and a half years. Yeah. Can't, it doesn't feel like that long. It doesn't. Can I say that? You've grown. <laughs> you, you are you I'm are not taller. supposed to be, but I'm still growing. So no, you, you are tall. I, f I feel like your father here. A bit. Yeah, of course, you, you have grown. And you've uh, got a, uh, some tattoos as well. Oh, I got a couple. They're out here, actually. I'm done out here. Are you out here? Yeah. So um, how have things gone in the last two years? So much has happened. Um, it's been crazy. When you left us last, I think you were heading to America, weren't you? It was, I think it was just before. Yeah. We went out, and I think we did... Um, that was our f probably first part of the US tour, was it? Or second? Probably, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's been madness from there on. Because whenever I, I sort of keep in touch with what you're doing on Facebook and, and Twitter, yeah. and you do spend to, seem to spend most of your time in the States, is that the sort of the plan at the moment? Yeah. Or was that the plan? The majority of the last two years have been there. And um, that's where, a lot in Seattle, and establishing a fan base in Seattle, which is brilliant. Yeah. And uh, the tour around the, the country was unbelievable. So I think where our music, is, they understand the music out there as well. You know, can the rock scene is yeah. is more alive there. You know, so the Americans love their rock music. They love it. Yeah. So Seattle, why in particular Seattle? Seattle because of the management we're with, right. and um, it's also got a great name for music. Jimi Hendrix and Nirvana and bands like that. You know, yeah. Pearl Jam and. The list goes on. It, it goes on and on. Yeah. So you're, you're touring America. Um, just describe sort of life in the band. You know, what does a sort of, are days the same? What, what's your sort of routine nowadays? It does become kind of samey after a while. I just, cause we were like, we just came back last week from eight months of being together 24 seven for eight months. <laughs> and then we got off the plane and I was like, I don't want to see you guys for a while. I can imagine. <laughs> and they're yeah. all like, yeah, same. <laughs> so yeah. And then the next day, Nick rings me up and he's like, what are you up to? I was like, go away. <laughs> yeah, so. so, you know, you're traveling, you're in each other's pockets for eight months. Yeah. Um, you must have disagreements. Not really. Oh, it's come meant, on, you must we, we had this conversation last time. I know, and, like, and I was hoping that things might have got worse. There was then. no fist fights. <laughs> there was no... Do you Nothing get the odd like argument, but yeah. usually that's over if we're writing music and there's something we feel passionate about or something like that, but yeah. But you you also must be knackered after eight months of touring. I it's just, it's I relentless. <laughs> I just fell asleep for a week. As I say, because, yeah. you know, what what is your daily routine? You sort of get up, what sort of time would you get up? Well, on the tour, like when it was, we were touring, it was, we, like our first, we left Seattle and we drove to Aspen, Colorado, and that was, um, it was about 30, 36 hour drive. <laughs> we did that in a van. Yeah. Eight of us in a van. So there was the five band members and then there was a, a driver and then we had two merchandise girls that run the tour. And uh, it was like, by the time we got there to the first show, we were already tired. Like, And it was, a, yeah, up first thing in the morning, go to the venue, get something to eat, sound check, go away, get something to eat play the show yeah. and then you're on a 10 hour drive to the next place or something like that. That's mad. And that's when you realise how big America is. It's well. huge. Yeah. yeah. It's like going into different countries. When you get to yeah. Texas or when we were there, it was like being in another country. Absolutely. Have you sort of calculated how many miles you've done over the last couple of years? That, the last leg of the tour was just over 10,000 miles. Gee. Yeah. Mostly on the road? All on the All road. On road, yeah. All on the road. Yeah. Are you, are you looked after well? Well enough, yeah. you know, there was some, like, you know, we'd share a hotel room and stuff. It's not like five star hotels, no. you know, but yeah, it's, it's going well. And you, you say a van, it's not like the old days, you know, the sort of Rolling Stones in their early days going up the M1 in an old transit. No, we, we've done that. <laughs> <laughs> we've done enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> that tr the van we had in Ireland saw a lot of miles. <laughs> yes. And um, no, it was a big, you know, those American big, two big ones, those yeah. seven litre engines. Thing. <laughs> but yeah, it was great. And do, do you eat well? No. Is it is it literally so all rubbish? Bad. Really? So bad. Stopping at Wendy's at three o'clock in the morning, getting cheeseburgers, and it was like. So how how do you keep yourself motivated? How do you, how do you keep it going? Because sometimes you must just think to yourself, oh god, I just can't get up on stage. I just can't play this music tonight. Yeah, uh, you'd feel like that, and then five minutes before, I'd be in the changing room, about to fall asleep. It's like, okay, we're on in five minutes. We go out, and it's just. It, Clicks, the adrenaline kicks in and 
we go on nuts then. Because <laughs> it's more important for you, isn't it, being the front man, the lead singer. You know, you have to put on. Yeah, but every, everybody has to be on their, their game every gig, you know, so it was it just the adrenaline worked. It yeah. kicked in. It didn't get old for us. It was, it was six nights a week, seven nights a week, and it was happy to do it. Wow. Yeah. Um, Album-wise, you, you um, last time we spoke, I think you were in the process of recording your first album. Yeah, I know it's how, released. Yeah, yeah, and how are things going with that? Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. It, um, I think we start, released it online, the physical copy in November, and it's just uh, a couple of months ago went on iTunes and Amazon and Google. and I was told that 98 dif different distribution sites, wow. and I only know like three of them. So. And do you know the sort of figures? Do, uh, do you no, keep a track of that sort of thing? We don't have a track of it, and that, that's all coming soon. So I think it's done every four months, that right. kind of way. And it's just like, but physical copies on the tour was blown away yeah blown away I remember ringing up the company that sent them to us and it was like okay we needed like a thousand more CDs he was like what <laughs> <laughs> and I was like I know <laughs> and he was just like he was like it's an extra hundred dollars to like do the overnight shipping I was like do the overnight shipping <laughs> At the end of the day, you are a business, aren't you? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And are you? Are there expectations from the sort of people behind the scenes as to how well this initial album has? Yeah, because we put so much into it. It was like failure wasn't an option. It was like this album's going to do well. Yeah. It was like I went out on the road with it, and but you know, the t-shirts and everything that we had kept everything running, and yeah. it was brilliant. And in terms of uh, the sort of the, the voodoo's as a sort of the band, how how much say do people have as to the sort of direction that you go, or is it entirely up to you? We pretty much have a hundred percent of that because we didn't tie ourselves down to any record labels, so we were just working with management, and they kind of let us do. They knew that what we were doing was working our own way. There'd be advice, of course, yeah. it, like maybe you should do that, maybe you should do that. But it was never, this is how you do it, yeah. it was, uh, which is great. And you play sort of two different sorts of, sorts of um, venues. When, when you support Queensryche, for example, yeah. you're, you're playing to a lot of people. Yeah, the, it was like House of Blues venues and stuff like that, and really nice theatres, some amazing places, and um, there'd be great crowds at them. Yeah. You know. And then you go to the bars and, and pubs. In, C but in Seattle, it started off, we started off at the Irish pubs, and then... You know, they were expecting, you know, the violins and everything. You know, we walked in and it was like, yeah, we're going to do some rock music. And we worked our way up the ladder in Seattle, which you have to do anywhere you go to start off. And by the end, we were headlining our own gigs on our own, yeah. playing places like the Hard Rock and stuff. And we had bands supporting us from around Seattle, got friends, became friends with all the other bands. So it felt like a home away from home by the end. I must tell you, I think I've interviewed you now three or four times, yeah. and every time I speak to you, you're much more confident. You know, I remember interviewing <laughs> the first, you the first interview, time. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I, was like, I, I think you were over, uh, hung over as well, but <laughs> yeah, actually, but, it's uh, probably all the interviews so but, far. Yeah, but you know, this is now, a, a, I suppose, a daily part of what you do. You mm -hmm. know, TV and radio interviews. It was great. We got a lot of, um, we did a lot of radio interviews, and um, we got a couple of TV ones in yeah. America. Um, I was very nervous on my first on the American one because uh, she came up to me and was like, these are all the questions I'm going to ask you after we played a song on a Seattle morning breakfast show. And then as soon as I sat down, she asked the opposite to the question. <laughs> so everything I prepared for it was gone. And I was like, OK. And I was just yeah. and I was nervous. So it yeah. was like like that the whole interview. <laughs> That's just being cheeky. <laughs> so I hope you appreciate uh, the set. This is just for you, you know, I being like a it. musician, obviously we've got the guitars. Nice. And then the sort of American backdrop. And we were, <laughs> we were gonna have beers as well, because obviously being a rock star, you drink beer nonstop. And we were gonna have beer, do you know we could not find a beer here at Viva Television, so we're, we're stuck with water and soft drinks. <laughs> but this is all for it's you. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> After the show, we played a little gig last night, and uh, uh, it turned in out to, we finished at five o'clock in the morning. You, you're on holiday, but you still want to perform. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, 
Yeah, madness. So things are going well. What are some of the things? Because I know there are certain things that you can't talk about. Every time I talk to you, there are things that you can't talk about. So let's stick to specifics at the moment. What can you tell us? What What are some of the exciting things on the horizon? As much as yeah, well, we haven't. We're trying to go. Out, we're going to attempt an Australian tour. Oh, yeah, yeah which is we haven't haven't got it completely booked or whatever right, but right, right. that's uh, next on the agenda is this a viva television exclusive it is at last I haven't told anybody that fantastic <laughs> uh, you have heard it here first mark daly all the voodoos are going to be conquering australia any sort australia is like another ireland now everybody <laughs> i went home to ireland after eight months away and it was like where's all my friends yeah they're, they're all in australia i was like let's go to australia <laughs> well they heard that you were going probably and they just wanted to oh, get, you to get, get settled down first uh, yeah. absolutely <laughs> but you know australia how is that going to differ to america do you think we don't know and that's what's ex exciting about it it's like it's the same um we're dying to get into the uk but it's just for some reason it just hasn't no. happened that way it's like and you just got to go with what's happening well let's face it if you can crack america you know Forget the UK, <laughs> tiny little but speck on the. I'd love planet. to. I just, I'd love to do a tour of the UK just to see what it's like in the UK. You know, we know what it's like in Ireland and uh, Spain and America and uh, Germany. We've been out yeah. to Germany, but UK and Australia would be, and then Asia. And Asia as but well. Everywhere. Well, yeah. <laughs> Eventually, World but domination. It's, it's one one thing at a time and. We've loved America, so you know, if if it's just America we end up playing, I'm so happy. Yeah. Is there a, a sort of sense that you know you, you've done America now? Are, no. are you bored with America? No, it'll, it'll be when we're doing we're headlining our own shows all over the country. That's that's when it'll be like, okay, now we'll, we can take a break from here. But every time we leave, we want to get back out there. But what a fantastic way to see countries, you know. Yeah, I love America. I yeah. absolutely love America. But to actually go around a country that you love playing music that you love yeah. and being paid to do it at the same time. It's crazy. And, you know, you were, you know, with the Voodoos, we were watching you, filming you, playing in bars, and yeah. the story of how you were discovered and all of that, it, it's still, do, do you still pinch yourself? It's weird. It's like every now and then you just go, oh, is that all happening? Because it just becomes normal. And then it's like when you step back and just go, we are. It doesn't feel like you're moving forward. It doesn't feel like. But then when you actually take a proper look at it, you're like, oh yeah, yeah. we are doing this. We're just slowly getting there. That's in the sort of offing at the moment. It is, yeah. We were just in um, London Bridge Studios in Seattle and uh, loved the studio. I think it's got the best drum room in the whole world or something. It's famous for it. And uh, some big albums come out of that place. And we just got a really good vibe in there. Yeah. And we did a demo and we did, we did a new single which we're releasing before, before the second album comes out. So it's a like, little teaser. And we're going to release that on iTunes and it, uh, it'll uh, have a special guest on it. And, uh, Looking forward to it. Oh, a special guest, mm -hmm. which obviously you can't tell. I can't tell. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd be shot. <laughs> <laughs> but we are talking a big, big special guest. Yeah. 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 yeah so. All right. Ooh. Well, we'll watch out for that. <laughs> yeah. uh, talking of special guests, well, not a special guest, but uh, I saw a picture of you and Ronnie Wood yes. uh, together. How on earth did that happen? But he was on the same flight. We were coming back from America and I saw him on the flight and I went up and I was like, it's Ronnie Wood. <laughs> I was like, can I get a picture? He was like, yeah, man. I was like, how was the tour? He was like, tour was good. I was like, we just did our tour as well. <laughs> so, you know, and then he, he took a picture. I, I thought he'd be like, yeah. oh, go away. You know, yeah, yeah, but he was yeah. seemed really nice. How cool is that? It was crazy, meeting a Rolling Stone. Had you heard of the Voodoos? No. <laughs> Have you given him an album at least? I was on the plane and I was like, I think there's an album in my hand luggage. And I couldn't get out or whatever. So Mick was there. I was like, check my hand luggage. And he checked it and he was like, I said the one time I was going to sneak it over to him. <laughs> They've still got it, haven't they? I, I was watching um, the, uh, the Glastonbury. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
they've they've still got it. It's crazy, still going like 50, 50 years now. So. After all these years, it's just it's just incredible. Yeah. Just go, actually, just going back to the studios, the studios in Seattle. What makes them so special? I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's like the rooms have this character and there's like especially with the drum room the way they've built it it was like that surely isn't a drum room but they just have it nailed down to a T and uh, I know the sense of knowing that all these amazing work like albums were made there it kind of gives you that feel to it's almost like, like maybe we'll make one of those you've got the spirits of these people looking yeah. over you and it's crazy and does it make a difference um, to have that on the album saying it was recorded at yeah it would yeah it would because that we did the first one um we really rushed the first album. We did it all in four days, and most bands could spend a couple of months on an album. Yeah, yeah. Or, but we wanted that raw live sound for the first album, and then the second album we wanted to put a bit more yeah. time into it and just you know have it all right. But isn't it fantastic that you've got the opportunity? I know it's not signed, sealed, and delivered, but you've mm -hmm. actually got the prospect of recording in a studio like that. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. What, what sort of uh, money are we talking about when? Uh, to hire a place oh like they that. look for a fortune it's like <laughs> the one that we were in there for one day and it was we we're like that's how much it is a day and I was like they yeah, obviously do special offers if we're going to do like a month and they're like special offers <laughs> yes. gift vouchers yeah because yeah, they used to get huge money off the record labels back you know in the 90s when Seattle was the best place in the world for yeah. music and but it's not that way now they, they have come down in price a lot since then yeah. So. but yeah it's still expensive though alright um, personal life can you have a personal life on, on the road? Yeah. yeah. You can, you can. I suppose I'm asking, have you got a girlfriend at the moment? I don't. You don't? No, no. Who wants a girlfriend when you're a rock, you know, person? I suppose you... There it's are enough time, no. enough time for it, because I'm just never in the same place long enough. So, yeah? Yeah. And what about the other, the other guys? Um, well, like Mick had Jean come over and she spent three months on tour with us and it was fine. And yeah. He loved it and then he's back in Cork with her and they you know, spend as much time as possible together and make it work that way. Yeah. I know when you're over in Spain, your, your dad's sitting there in the in the corner. Yeah. Uh, it must be great to spend some time with him. It is, and it was a, it's a shame it was only a couple of days yeah. this time to, yeah, but I'll be back again. No worries. I'm, I'm sure you will. <laughs> because he, you know, as we all know, he, he supported you in, in the early days. He must be absolutely delighted. Oh, yeah. It's, the support we got was crazy. Yeah. And we probably wouldn't have been able to keep going. I remember we were uh, up in Donegal and we didn't have money we didn't have enough petrol in the van to get to the gig and it's like dad <laughs> we were putting like water into our milk to fill up our cereal and it was like we we're like this is you know yeah. this is the dry and we wrote the album up in Donegal in the middle of nowhere and it was probably the best times we ever had as a band because yeah. it was like we were struggling but still loving what we were doing so I bring up my dad and was like we haven't got petrol to get to the gig. And as soon as we get paid for the gig, <laughs> yeah. I'll send you back the petrol money, which never happened. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy how it all happened like that. And, and things now, you know, what are the best things about being in a band like yours at this stage? You know, what are the best things about it? It's all the excitement and the buzz and getting to travel and writing new music. I think with the first few albums, you've got so much idea, so yeah. many ideas. So I know in like 10 years now, I'd be like, Oh, I've got to do another album. <laughs> that, that's a diplomatic answer. I want to know about, do you get free stuff and things like yes. that now? <laughs> <laughs> I, we're doing a gig in California and um, this uh, Blue Microphones is the company. They got on to me and they have this new, it was like Encore 300 and it was like, showed up to the gig and was like, like you know, here's this is yours. I was like, what? <laughs> and the boys got, um, uh, O'Sheen and Nick got uh, endorsed by Blackstar Amps. And wow gave them two amazing amps and we were like, we're getting all this free stuff. And yeah. It was like, it was amazing. And there was a drum kit? There was Porky Pie sp uh, sponsored film and um, it was an amazing kit, amazing kit. So what, what do you want to be sponsored by next? What, what would be the sort of ideal thing? Have you had a Guinness. car? <laughs> <laughs> Guinness. No, come on. I'm sure you get all the Guinness that you want, but <laughs> what about a car or something like that? Uh, car, well, yeah, that wouldn't be bad. Yeah. 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 Right. Ferrari. Yeah, well, yeah, not yeah. bad, not yeah. bad. And, and the worst thing about, is there, you know, are there things that you think, oh, I didn't really realise it would be like that, touring all this time? It's not, like, 
when people think tour and they think it's like madness, like wild and like, you know, crazy after parties and stuff. We'd finish the gig and we were like, right, back to the hotel. We're going to be up tomorrow. You know, it's like, but, you know, you get a night off, you'd enjoy it. But uh, it's not as mental as you think, like, as people think it is. But people have these expectations, don't they? Of people like you, you know, you're out partying yeah. and drunk. And, but there, there has to be a limit, I suppose. Oh, there is. Like, <laughs> by the end in Seattle, we were staying and having movie nights every night because... <laughs> We just couldn't do it, and we had to eat healthy. Um, we were like there was a gym in the place we were staying, so we were in the gym every day. Stop it! We just had we had to. You're in a gym. Yep. My God, things are getting bad. It was crazy. I know. But we had to, we had to because it was yeah. like if I saw another cheeseburger, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna cry. Well, you have to be you know you have to be fit as well. Yeah. At the end of the day. The start of the tour, the first the first three four uh, nights in, I was I realized how unfit I was, yeah. and then towards the end of the tour, it was a big difference. Have you ever missed a, a gig through illness? Never, no. I did a gig in Ireland, it was in Mullingar, in a place called Danny Burns, and I was way too sick to do the gig. I was in, like shivering in the back while the <laughs> lads were setting up the gear, and I slowed it in and did it, even though I probably shouldn't have. It was one of those, like, holding on to the microphone while I'm like wanting to fall down. It was a, it was a two hour gig, and we wow. did that, and then drove back to Cork in the back of the van. Just <laughs> was there a sense of, I've just got to do it? Or was it the thought of letting people down? Well, at the time we were, we were saving for the American tour. So oh, right. I, I was like, we, we needed every, every bit of money we could get and every bit of exposure before we left. So yeah, yeah so it was, I had to do it. <laughs> All right. um, I've got family here as well. I've got uh, Kerry, who's my granddaughter. She writes a very popular fashion blog and uh, I know she's interested in, in your fashion in particular. Right. Uh, so if, if you could just tell us <laughs> the sort of look that you go for. Black. <laughs> <laughs> Most of our, yeah, all of us just wear black, black. yeah, or a shirt, black shirt. Yeah. Um, yeah, we never really think about style. We're never one of those bands that, like, like this is what we'll wear and stuff. We did um, a rock cruise called Ship Rocked, and uh, there was a band on them, a great band called Lynam. And they had like these like cobweb yeah. ripped things and hair everywhere, and I was just like, it just I don't know I couldn't do it. It's not us, but eventually we started to mold into a style because we you know were around each other so much. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And I know there's other things in the pipeline, TV stuff possibly. Yeah, a little bit of we did some a little bit of recording, but again you again that'll be next year. It, yeah. Oh, yeah. next year. Yeah. All right. Well, are you, well, you'll be back in Spain again. Oh yeah, yeah. no doubt. And we'll uh, we'll obviously find out about it more about it then. Um, Mark, it's been a delight seeing you again. Thank and thank you. Very and much. you're the luck charm. I am your good luck so. charm. Yeah. Every time uh, I do an interview with Mark, something big happens. <laughs> I'm just hoping I get some royalties one day. <laughs> I didn't say good luck. <laughs> Mark Daly, all thank the you best with whatever you do, and it's always great to see you. Thank you. Take up from me